some women turn their husbands on by putting on a lacy teddy. Others try to turn their prospective spouses on by putting on diapers and dressing up like babies. Now, I know that may kind of throw you a little bit, but I want you to welcome our guests. Please welcome Gene. Gene is in disguise because of fear that he may be jeopardizing his job and career in law enforcement. If word got out that he dresses like a baby for sexual pleasure, there could be some very serious repercussions, especially when he, like, stops somebody on the side of the road or... Yeah, you figure it out. Also, welcome Gene's wife, Dee, who participates in her husband's infantile fetish by playing mommy. We also have joining us Jessica, who's a 27-year-old attorney who is a baby girl by night and a lawyer by day, and Jessica's boyfriend, Don Davis, a retired Hollywood entertainment executive who enjoys acting like Jessica's daddy. We also have Ginger, who is, who is known as Louis Goebel, who enjoys sleeping in a crib, and his playmate, Dennis, a scientific researcher who has baby friends all over the country and enjoys dressing in diapers himself. Thank you all for being here. <laughs> to say... To say that this is a phenomena or this is something that's that's rather new, I think is is really kind of hitting it on the head. I've never heard of this before, and until I saw you all in a recent program on someone else's program, I didn't know that this existed. Just what is this all about? Somebody start, Gene. Tell us what this is all about. Well, as you indicated, uh, it's called infantilism or infantilism, and. It's probably actually not all that new, except that, for the most part, as far as the general public is concerned, uh, a great many people, or of course the vast number of people, do not know about this. They've never heard about it before. They've never read about it. They've never met anybody that they know of, at least. That they know of. That they know of. Uh, of course, there's a lot of closet infantilists that do not, for obvious reasons, come out of the closet and let people know what their interests are because of the fear of uh, social castigation and so on. But, but there are a lot of, 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 I don't know what you want to call them, like groups that have been in the closet for several years, groups that, that do different things that are coming out. And some people think it's a good thing that some groups come out of the closet. Why come out of the closet and tell people that you dress up in diapers to, for some sort of sexual pleasure? Well, as you indicate, there's <laughs> several groups, uh, s and groups, sadomasochists, uh, B and D, bondage and discipline, DNS, uh, domination and submission, this kind of thing, uh, WS, water sports. Uh, yes, there are a lot of other groups that have come out of the closet, and it's it's time that uh, infantilists come out of the closet. Don, you wanted to say something here. Yeah. Um, w when you think of it logically, uh, Montiel, uh, spanking or something like that is a fairly popular fetish and has been for hundreds of thousands of years. Yet we all for adults. For adults. For Wait, adults. Is this real yeah, popular I mean, to this audience right here? Right. Applaud, applaud if you enjoy being spanked. Now wait, wait, wait. Applaud. <laughs> wait a second. Wait a second. Wait a second. I got something here. Applaud if you know a friend who's told you they enjoy being spanked. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, so yeah, it, it may the, be a, more popular point, than they even think. Right. But the point is that we all, some of us were spanked, some of us weren't. Some of us like it and some of us don't. But the point is, we all wore diapers at one time in our development. And there's a, a good vo volume of research that indicates that sometimes in the, the in most innocent action of changing a diaper or something becomes pleasurable to the child. So that it's, but it's, it's pleasurable not, it's, enough to let it carry on into adulthood? Well, sometimes you come back to it. You go back to it. Let's take a look for a second, because I, I really think what we ought to have an opportunity to do is to see you, if you will, in action. And I think we have some photos back there of Ginger. Let's let's run some photos of Ginger up and so everyone can take a look at this. Now, this is Ginger. This is you blowing out your birthday cake or something? And yes, it is. Crib in a bottle. That's, that's, that's real good. Okay. And we have some of Jessica also. Let's take, let's take a look at some photos so we can see what we're talking about. Jessica? Jessica came dressed this way for the show. Here she is, you're putting on your diaper, and this is, what is this, Jessica? Tell me what this outfit is. I can't really see it from it's here. Like it's like some sort of little, Kelly. little it's a, Baby Kelly is what it is. Baby Kelly, we have another one of Jessica. Okay, and that's little socks. And that's the onesie. 
And you have, you have a diaper on under this also? Yes. Okay. All right, and then we have Dennis, right? We have some pictures of Dennis. Let's take a look at some pictures of Dennis. Yeah, there we go. Now, Dennis, you, you not only are dressed up like a child, but you have, like, you have a collar on. Right. W what's the collar for? Let's see another. This collar, she, you're on a leash. Right. So, so well, are you, like, infantile and into to the well, other stuff, too? I, I'm, I'm into, um, I think there's this idea that um, I'm into more than one thing. And I think this is possible with a lot of different people. And for me, the, uh, the infantilism is a way of, uh, um, of giving up control. And that's part of what the collar is. Um, so there's wearing the collar. There's the idea of giving up control. There is the idea of going back and feeling more helpless. And this is one of the things that happens when I dress up as a child, uh, as a baby. I feel, um, I feel more helpless. The collar adds to that. It's a form of submission. And the collar sort of signifies that and helps me get more into a submissive role, a more regressive role. All right, yes, ma'am. To address the diaper issue, do you do what little babies do in diapers and they change you too? Do, do, do you uh, soil your diapers, so to speak? Is that part of this whole thing? Donna, see you rubbing on Jessica's arm. Jessica. Wetting in them, yes. Stop for a second. As I'm looking around the room, and everybody at the same time is shaking their head. I'm sure that everybody out there is shaking their head. And what they're trying to figure out is uh, almost all of the population leaves us behind when they're infants. Why have you taken it into adulthood? Anyway, Can I speak on that? you go right ahead, Ginger. There's a reason you take this into adulthood. Number one, it's part of a fantasy realm, and we all play in our fantasies in different ways. Uh, for us, or I should say for myself, this is something very free and very relaxing. It's not all sexual. There is a lot of sexuality there. Um, I would say maybe anywhere from 45 to 50 percent of it's sexual for me because I'm still an adult, okay? I'm still an adult physically. But what it really comes down to me is the nurturing growth I get from it meaning I let go, I relax, and I have an opportunity to be free and be a child again without carrying the responsibilities that I carry 90% of my life daily. So it's calming. Now, same thing for you, Very Jessica, nurturing. right? You're, you're, a, you're a lawyer by day, but this gives you an opportunity to just completely unload, right? Yes. All right, and, and same thing for you, Gene. I mean, it's you, you do your job during the day, and you come home, and Mommy takes care of you, and... So you can just completely unload all of your cares. Is that it? No pun intended, I'm sure. <laughs> and I wasn't trying to make a pun either, but I'll tell you, we'll take a break, and when we come back, we'll find out if you couldn't, why couldn't you find a different way to relieve that tension? We'll be back right after that. Talking with grown-ups who dress up like babies, not only for sex, but for nurturing and for comfort and for relaxation. And, and I want to ask something of both of the daddy and the mommy in this. Do you get some sort of pleasure out of this, or are you just participating in this to help your spouse or your loved one? Montel, I think you do uh, uh, maybe indirectly or directly. It depends on the individual. I think it varies from individual, of course, but for me, uh, it's just, it's mostly the pleasure that I see Jean get, uh, and then it gives me pleasure back, so it's like a, you know, win-win situation. But it's not a dominance thing, I mean, for you. For you, us, you know. there I mean, is If it wasn't that, diapers, yeah. would you be, would you be wearing something, maybe hitting somebody? <laughs> I'm just saying that, <laughs> not to be funny, but is it a dominance thing for you? No, not necessarily for me, no. All right, Don, how about you? No, it's, it's pretty much like uh, Dee said. It's a win-win situation that I help Jessica relax, and uh, in turn, I have a relaxed, together person to love. So it's a total win-win. It's, it's it's emotion. It's not dominance in this so, particular case. So Jessica, in your case, you you play in this at night. It helps you really, really relax. And so, in the morning, you're more free and more right. Okay. Yes, sir. Um, I have a question for Jessica. Do any of your clients know what you do? Or, no. <laughs> um, are, are you afraid that they're going to find out now? Um, yes, I am. I don't want them to find out. I think that they probably wouldn't but, understand. 
But well, I think we've done a pretty good job of concealing your identity, so Montel. it might be kind of tough. Go Montel, ahead. You asked a question a little while ago that, that I think needs to be addressed. Why we do this and don't find other avenues to necessarily express ourselves. I think all of us find other avenues to express ourselves. Some of us like to go camping. Some of us like to play baseball. There's hundreds of ways to express ourselves. But, I might... but Ginger, I'm not being flippant with you, but I mean, playing baseball and going camping is different than putting on a diaper and soiling myself and having some other Well, I don't. Change. Personally, I don't soil myself, okay? okay? Right. But, I, but quite honestly, I play in a lot of other avenues. I play in the SM community. I play in the cross-dressing community. I play in a lot of communities to where I feel I gain something spiritually for myself and something fun for myself that's consensual with other adults. Why would our parents teach us to go to the bathroom in a toilet if we're going to go to the bathroom when we're older in diapers? So is that the only part of this that bothers you or is it part of, let's forget that for a second. Let's just think about the fact that they dress up in 90s and they sleep with teddy bears and all of you, you suck your thumb and the fetal position and all this stuff. Does that part bother you? Or it's just the soiling part that bothers you? The di I don't care if you dress up like babies and stuff. That's your business. I mean, personally, I'd rather wear lace and lingerie and do it right. Uh oh, really? You know? <laughs> <laughs> but, just, I mean, the part that just just bothers me is the diapers, you uh -huh. know? I think you let the gremlins get you. I think <laughs> every demon that there is has gotten to one, two, three, four, five, six. And you can't forward to let that happen. I'm an Afro-American. It took me 400 years to get our lie back, but I didn't go with the, the war gremlins. Wait, 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 wait. We can't, we can't, wait, 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 wait. We can't, we're not gonna curse, but I think our point no, is, you just let yourself go. You've taken the extreme. No, I want to come I back wanna, in. Okay. Go ahead, go, no, okay. go ahead, Dennis. You know, everyone has their way of making love, and I'll bet you have your own way of making love no, and enjoying your sexuality. Ma'am, wait a minute, ma'am. Ma'am, you can't be heard. You can't be heard without a microphone. Okay, wait. It has to be normal, but, Yes, ma'am. Okay, well, let's... Gremlins let, will come at you, but you gotta say no. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> okay. Well, you know what? See, right, right now, you're letting the gremlins get to you, okay? So, so... Hold on a minute. We're, we're just gonna keep all the gremlins out of the Montel Williams show and get a question from a man right here. How you doing? Pretty good. Would you wear a diaper? No way. Okay. I <laughs> <laughs> well, I'd like to know if you guys were ever mo child molested, or if you guys were most, like... Were they molested Molested or when you were younger. Well, you know, that's an interesting point. Is this, is this some sort of fantasy on your part to, yeah. to, to like, no, go after children? No, speaking personally, no. No molestation whatsoever. Uh, on my part, nobody's ever molested me. Uh, this has nothing to do with that. And, uh, and well, I'm sorry I have to ask. I'm not, I'm sorry that I have to ask, but I have to ask this question. I, if I you are so into messing with, or not messing with, being involved with people who play like babies, don't you yourself, for Don and for Dee, don't the two of you yourself have some sort of a, I don't know, psychological um, breakdown. No, I don't mean breakdown. <laughs> But some sort of propensity for young people? No. Uh, no? Montel, that Jessica wants to relax by regressing to a baby. I myself have nothing but totally appropriate feelings towards real, honest-to-God infants. I'm a parent of three myself. Uh, well, now you have a fourth. Right. But, okay. and, my, and my late first, and my late wife was a professor of childhood development. Uh, she started wedding at menopause, which will happen to approximately 60% of women who have raised children. But, we adopted this as a coping strategy. that's something entirely different than this. And, and well, no, well, no, she well, became a very high profile big baby girl as a coping strategy because she was a 50-year-old woman who had suddenly started wedding because she reached menopause, and we found that this was a way to make it feel okay for her. Okay, but now let me, let me stop so, you there because I, we're going to take a break. When we come back, I need to still try to understand this. You say it's for relaxation. For me to relax, I go to the gym, pump some iron, go sit in a hot tub. If I get out of the hot tub, I might have a cold one. I'm relaxed. I don't need to put on a diaper to go the next step. When we come back, I want you to try to tell us why we have to do that. We're going to take a break, and we'll be back right after this. We've been 
talking with men and women who get turned on by dressing in diapers. And, and Dina, did you know this about Gene when you, when you married him? Did you know this was No, good? I absolutely did not. I never heard of it before in my life. So how long were you married before Gene walked in, you know, in, in shocking hot white diapers <laughs> to go to bed? How long? Uh, a year, I guess. But part of that time, um, he was away. He was away. He was in the service for a little while. And so he was gone. And one time he sent me a gift, and he packed it with all these disposable diapers he wrapped around it. While he was away in the service? Yeah. Wait, Gene. Gene, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> <laughs> I was in the service. Were you doing this while you were in the service? You do this every since you are familiar with the fact that you like it, whether it's from three, the age of three, four, five, six, whatever it is, regardless if you're in the service, if you're a civilian, it doesn't make any difference. I know just, no uh, one in the service saw you doing this. You got, did you get an office? As a rule, story? I did not walk down the middle of Main Street on the base uh, wearing a diaper, no. Oh, okay. All right. But now, once this started, he, Gene came to you and, and Well, was he started dropping little hints and, and bringing maybe stories to show me and to get my reaction. He was trying to break it to me gently. And, uh, and he, did it, he did it the right way, because you just don't walk up to somebody and say, hey, I like to wear diapers. Right. <laughs> yes, sir. Oh, well, I have a question for the two on the end, if I could. You know, do you guys have children of your own? Well, you know, no, you don't. Dennis doesn't. I have a 16-year-old son. 16-year-old son. Who has seen me do a few different shows on the issue of cross-dressing on infantilism and thinks it's about the greatest thing under the sun because his father's free enough and open enough to discuss the issues and not be afraid to approach anyone with them because this is a fun thing for me, and it doesn't have to be fun for anyone else but me and those I share it with. Well, what was your point, though? You well, I wanted to know, I mean, uh, wouldn't your children feel embarrassed, you know, to know that their father is You know, my like son sees me walk down the street in Seattle, and he's got a bunch of his friends, and he hangs around a few of the boys in the gang, okay? And you can't get away from it nowadays. And somebody will make a comment about this individual walking down the street, Ginger here, dressed in female, and he'll look at him and he'll say, close your mouth, that's my father. Yes, and he's proud of me because I don't lay anything out that I'm anything different than who I am. And something you need to know about this, the reason I do this thing, okay, infantilism to me is enjoyable. It's fun. I open a lot of doors in my life. And quite honestly, I don't expect everyone to understand them, but I've just opened a door that most people cannot, that's out here in this audience probably, everywhere. And that's opened the door of communication and say, hey, certain things feel good to me, and I'm not allowed to, I'm not afraid to express that to you. Yes, ma'am. Um, I wanted to know, have you guys ever had like a normal sex life or you always had the diapers and I mean the whole time you were married or together? Well, let's not have I the was, misconception yeah. that this is this something is that goes on all the time, no. 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Uh, uh, it's, it's, it's a very, very Maybe, small part uh, of our life. Just a couple of times so a month. I mean, how like... often do you do this? I know in your case, if you say it's not seven days a week, but in Jessica's case, right, you do this quite often. Quite often. I mean, how many how many times a week do you do you do this to relax? Um, four or five nights a week. But I also, like the lady over there, dressed. I like to wear lingerie too. So four or five days a week, you're in a diaper, and two days you're in a teddy, and <laughs> you take a break on a day. Okay, yes, ma'am. Uh, um, do you like to get breastfed? Wait, 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 wait. Wait, <laughs> <laughs> wait this is this is not. I know, but but that, no, we're talking about wearing diapers, and that's diapers, not this other well, that's half. Probably, of this. No, that's that's probably a fair question. Uh, is it a fair question? Yes, yeah, that's a fair All right, question. Gene, go ahead and answer. Uh, yeah, uh, you know, it, it's uh, you, you may not uh, necessarily be with somebody that uh, actually the that the product is there, shall we say? But uh, you know that can that can be part of it. That can certainly be part of it. It's it's part of a of, of an act that a baby might do, and uh, and, and and in in the role playing in that part, it can but, happen. But this is not only a sexual act for you. There are, there are, I mean, the whole gamut of childish submissiveness is part of it. Uh, everything up to and and sex is included. There are other pieces of this. Is that correct? There are some people that do this that have no sex at all regarding it. Uh, it's just a sensual thing where they can relax within themselves and regress. Montiel, that's yes, pretty much the way it is for Jessica and me, that our sex life is apart from the infantilism, that that's something that occurs after we've relaxed. This is for relaxation. Our sex life is more or less conventional. It starts after that. Yes, sir. I'd like to ask you a question. Um, 
first by beginning to say that I believe God pre created us to be a progressive people. And not get stuck at the and infant not, stage? I be, yes, because I hear them mentioning repeatedly, regress, regress. Aren't we too progress? And All right, well, let's let them ask that. Let, 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 let them ask that. Why don't you progress. answer that? Progress. Is this a progressive thing? Why when do we, we do stuck? regress, we do progress because we've opened our minds and become a little freer within ourselves. You, I mean, I believe just like everyone. Well, everybody believes a little differently, but I believe in a God as well. And I believe my particular God looks at me very well for taking care of myself and not for harming others, but for doing things consensually with other adults and to open up my mind enough to where I can experience new concepts and new ideas. But you know, wait a minute now, Ginger. I mean, there are people that are sitting out there right now looking at this television set saying, okay, I can buy opening up new ideas, new experiences in life, but give me a break. What's next? If we go to diapers now, what are we gonna do tomorrow? Well, let's put it this way. This is my kick, okay? This is where I find my pleasure. How many people find pleasure in a bottle of booze? How many people find pleasure in things that are very negative towards your body, towards your mind, and towards in general, society. What I do does not hurt society. It does not hurt those I play with. Dennis and I are not lovers. Dennis and I are playmates. We right. play together as children would play. Blocks, drawing, cartoons, whatever. Okay, we do. That's the way we play together, and we play with others in the Seattle area that way. But we're not lovers. And you and don't, we don't hurt anybody sexually. while you're doing it. No, we do not. You had a question. My question to you is, um, when did you guys first realize that you like this kind of act? I mean. Did you start when you were teenagers, first experience, your first sexual experience? When did you figure out that you like being treated like a kid or you like dominating and treating somebody like a baby? Right. And when did this all come about? When did you figure this out for yourself? Well, for myself, it was about, uh, it's kind of hard to remember exactly, but roughly about the age of four or five. And uh, in, in some cases, this is a situation where you have younger siblings, and they, they, if you're older than them, and you, you see the parents seem to pay more attention to the babies of the family and so on, you might have a feeling that uh, you're going to get more attention and so on, maybe in your own mind, more love, whatever. And that may start the process. All right, Jessica, for you, when did this start with you? It's hard to explain. It just sort of happened. It was like one day waking up and realizing, yeah, I like this. It's nice. I mean, but it was, were you like, you're 29 now, were you 18, 27. 19, you're 27 now, were you 18, 19, 20? 17. 17. Yeah, 17, 18 years old. All right, how about for you, Ginger? I was about 30 years old. I was playing in the um, SM bondage community, which I play in, uh, and it was a form of humiliation at one particular point, and it was very humiliating, okay? But I learned aspects of it that were very nurturing and not so humiliating, aspects of the of the crib. Laying in a crib is, well, if you haven't experienced it in your adult life, I don't expect you to understand it. It's very nurturing, very comforting. And Dennis, how about for you? When did you start doing this? Well, Montiel, I think this is, um, I think where it started for me is actually um, real life, well, I started off as a social worker. And what I realized is that a lot of the work that I was doing as social work, in social work was very superficial. And then I went and got a degree in early childhood education. Because what I realized is that when we're children, that that's where we learn how to love one another. We learn how to nurture, and we, we role model nurturing, and we role model loving one another. But you, but you took that childhood development course and right. turned it into developing this yes. altar. Yes. Okay, well, we have to take it, a it, break. Well, let me take a break. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we'll be joined by a therapist who's going to try to shed a little light on what this is all about. We'll be back right after this. a photo of Jessica and Dennis and and you know if do you send this would you send something like this out to your friends do your parents know that you do this yes y you know huh your parents know you do this Jessica I told mom tonight you told what well, yeah I, did, I bet you better tell her before you come on national television but right. I mean well, Dennis yeah Montel I want to respond to that I was on the Donahue show so my parents my uh, mother knows about this and my relatives does she know about it before the Donahue show yeah I talked to her about it um, but I've also been very involved with Queer Nation. And I think there's a real issue of, of visibility here. And if it's all right for queers of all different uh, sexual orientations to become more visible, then it's okay for me as a queer to become more, invis more visible 
as a infantile list. Visibility is important, and it's happening all over the country. It's happening with bisexuals. It's happening with transsexuals. It's happening with all types of people. With heterosexuals, right now. Gene, are you are you just heterosexual? Yes. And you do this. Do you have any friends? Did you know any other people like in this line of work that you work in that that will do this also? Yes, I do. You do? Yeah. This is this uh, is pervasive. You're going to tell me that there's probably a congressman somewhere that does this. Oh yes. Oh, in right. fact, uh, they had a show on uh, <laughs> uh, that took that came out of Washington D.C. That there was a, a person on there that has a boutique in very close to the to the White House and so on that sells, uh, let's call it adult uh, AIDS, okay, wait, wait, sexual wait, wait, AIDS. Wait, wait, wait. And his biggest selling product is plastic, plastic pants, pants in adult size. His biggest selling product, and he says he has a lot of. So, Gene, why did you say it was very, very close to the White House? Why, why are you saying that? Well, because it's in Washington, D.C., and oh. that's where the government is. Oh, oh okay. But, right. uh, it's just in Washington, D.C. I'm sorry? It's just in Washington, D.C. You weren't trying to make some sort of a point or inference. Or... No, no, no. Well, you wouldn't name names. Not, uh, <laughs> no, no, not George. Oh, what? Well, not that I know of. <laughs> yes, sir. My question is to the panel. Um, at a younger age, were you guys dramatized by any way of visualizing or seeing anybody? You're looking at this the wrong way. Okay, you're looking at this that we had to face something negative in our life to come to this point to where to create this negativity. This is not the issue here. We not have negative. grown up in our life, and this is a freeing, fun experience in our life. We are more capable of expressing this to you. Look, everybody out here has something fun in their life. They do something. Okay, we don't know what it is. You come on a show. You'll go in front of your friends. You'll talk about it. We've come to tell you, you don't have to be into this. That's OK. We are. But we you enjoy also, this. But you also want us to know that there could be someone right and next door. And there could be someone in your family that in you're your laughing family? at us because you think it's a little funny. There OK, so do we. OK. Audience. Could be we someone in the ourselves. audience? Sure. Mind me, me, Jessica. After, huh? the oh. after, we <laughs> the, after we went on the Donahue show, and there was, there was three of us here that were on the Donahue show, if I may mention a competitor. No, well, uh, he's not a competitor. Okay. We're, we're far, but let, we're far let me above him. Let, let, yeah. 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 I agree. I agree. I agree. No, I'm sorry. But we'll leave his but, name out for the rest of the show, okay. all right? Yeah. But let, <laughs> let me just say, though, that uh, as a result of being on there, on that show, I received I have been receiving packages of mail from people who saw that show and were closet infantilists and had been spending their whole lives wanting to do this and thought they were the only one in the world that was doing this. And after seeing us on that show, they realized they're not crazy, they're not psychotic, they're not, they haven't gone berserk in some way. It helped those people tremendously. But, but they are so happy to know they're not alone now. But hold, on, hold right there for a second, Gene. I will guarantee, I'm gonna let you ask your question. I will guarantee you, when this show airs, tomorrow I'm gonna get like 300 phone calls from people, 400 phone calls from people are gonna say, from all over the country are gonna say, well, wait a second, Lintel. What makes you think we even wanna know about people like this? They're gonna have, I'm gonna have people calling and say, that was one of the most disgusting shows I've ever seen in my life. And you're telling me that you received mail. How much mail did you get? I mean, ballpark, 100, 200 letters, 300 letters? Uh, probably in the neighborhood of about oh, 40 or 50, something 40 like or that. 50. Uh, but, but then again, those are the people who took the time to find out the address and, and write right. in and that kind of thing. There's, there's probably countless other ones out there that did yeah. not know how. Let or me Montel, tell you'll also hear more negative than you will positive. That's what this world and our society thrives on, is the negative, the fears, the lack of right. knowledge. We survive on that. That's why you can have a talk show here, and many others can, and these issues can be brought out, and you can become a great talk show host. Because no, not you become, have these issues, already am, and no. because of your capability. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you for that. Yes, ma'am. I'm curious. Um, you mentioned that you had three children. You're, are you also parents of kids? Which one, daughter, Jessica yes. or Jean? Um, Jean? Jean? Okay, Jean? Yes. Okay, and you mentioned that you had a son. How do you feel about this as a role model as far as parenting with oh. your children? How, how does this play in? I mean, don't you, how it's do you great. do with your children? It's great, because you know what I'm doing? I'm showing my son some self-esteem for myself and taking care of myself. And you know what we do as a society generally is we don't allow children to feel good about themselves. Wait, let me ask you a question. Do you have, do you have any kids? No, I don't. None at all? No, I don't. Do you do really it? 
This, what does this do to you? This, this makes me very apprehensive for the children that you do have. For their children. Why? For their children, May, yeah. Not knowing them May makes you apprehensive. That, please? Okay, go right ahead. Uh, uh, address it. Well, as in all adult sexuality, we do not practice our sexuality in the presence of children. Right. So that not with kids. It, kids just as nothing. any other mommy and daddy activity, we have our private life, the child has theirs. This does not impact my children at all. In fact, when, they, when a child sees your toys, they may think Christmas is coming in a week or two. <laughs> <laughs> right. I'm sorry. I said, yes, yes, sir. Yeah, have you guys consulted a doctor about this? Is it like normal? Well, you know what? In the hood. You know what? Don't... In the hood, you don't do that. You don't know about what's going on in the hood. They may have, there may be some guys that have got like a Raiders patch on the back of their no, diaper. You know what I'm saying? That's right. That's right. That's right. Hey, maybe an axe on it. There may be a couple guys over there willing to like go off because somebody stole no. one other guy's bottle. No. Wait a second. I want to take a break, but we can't take a break. I want to stay here for a second because we have joining us Dr. Jim Gordon, a therapist and a doctor. We've gone the whole summer. I wanted to get you in and ask your question. I'll tell you what, let's take a break. When we come back, I want you to try to explain this to us and see if we can all understand a little bit better, okay? All right. And we'll find out about it in the hood. All right. We'll be back in a second. He's been here for a little while, but we haven't had an opportunity to ask your question. That was to Dr. Jim Gordon. But if you just hold on a second, because I want to make a point here. You know, we were talking about in the hood, and you said, in the hood, they don't do this. Wow. But I remember I went to see the movie Boys in the Hood, and there was one guy in the whole movie that had, like, a pacifier in his mouth the whole movie. That was so movies. So maybe, maybe that was must... movies. Huh? That was for movies. Oh, that was for movies. Okay, right. I just wondered. He so was there with Ice Cube. He was he, with Ice Cube. He, okay, he, now, he now tell me about your hood. Huh? Yeah, tell me about your hood. And, well, and... we don't see, we don't wear no, no diapers for the sexual thing. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> All right, but you had another question. Oh, wait, wait, I'm sorry. We're in Houston. No, what? Wait, don't say that. But we had, you had another question. You know what song? No, you had another question. I'm your baby tonight. <laughs> yeah, what, is that what you think this is all about? I'm your baby tonight? OK, all right. Did we get that point cleared up? Yeah. OK, good. Now, Dr. Gordon, again. <laughs> yes. See, he's saying in some neighborhoods this doesn't take place. A lot of neighborhoods around the country it doesn't take place. Why is this happening? What, what is this? Is this a phenomenon? Is this something that we all should now go out and check our friends for, check our prospective spouses for, that they're going to come in one night in a diaper? The reality is there's things happening around that we would all be shocked to find out from our neighbors, our friends, etc. cetera. Uh, people have different ways of acting things out. Uh, people are making loads of money right now on looking for the inner child. You know, that's, that's a great way to make bucks as a shrink at the present time. Is this what this is all about? Maybe it's an extreme. The inner child? Okay, maybe it is the total extreme in inner child. Inner child development, things like that, when people lose out and they've missed a gap in their lives, uh, you know, maybe a time to go back to it. I think you'll find a lot of the people that do this, uh, as with people who are doing a lot of inner child work, are people who are extremely have been the caretakers, the rescuers, et cetera, in their families. They become lawyers, doctors, whatever, uh, and they're very, you know, under pressure. And it's one way of asking for help. It's Did one you... of the safest ways of asking for someone to take care of you. But I asked, I asked the question earlier. I mean, I go to the gym, I go to a hot, to sauna, a hot tub, you know, chill out, get myself together, maybe have a beer, maybe not, and more times out of 10, not, but I just relax and get myself <laughs> relaxed. Why not relax that way rather than put on because you're, you're doing what everyone says you should do. And so, you know, fortunately for my profession, we have a lot of people who try to emulate you, and therefore they come to me when they find out that they don't like to go to the gym, they don't like to work out, and they don't want a beer. Uh, they want to come out to California and be an actor. They want to, you know, do something else other than work in the corporate uh, field. And, of course, you know, society says, no, you shouldn't do that. You have to be this other thing. Right. So, therefore, they end up coming to me. Go ahead. Oh, yes, ma'am. Okay, earlier Ginger said that them that they weren't they weren't lovers. They were not lovers. They just a playmates. Okay, why couldn't you dress up like Hercules and perform for a woman? I mean, isn't it the same? I could. In some way, he's been in all kinds of stuff. I'm he's in like I am an ex-marine. Okay, I have played the corporate. Uh, no, just a minute, just a minute. I have played the corporate. I have played retail market. I've been a manager for major corporation throughout the United States. And now, if you want to call it anything, instead of getting older, I'm going through my second childhood because I'm becoming freer with myself. Money's not the first issue in my life, but enjoying my life 
and letting those around me, including my family, there is no one in my life that doesn't know about this, know about it, that I'm having fun in my life. And when I die, when it does happen, I'm going to do so with a smile on my face, not regretting my life. Yes, ma'am. Uh, my comment is, I've, not, I've been observing the panel, and I noticed that you and the earrings are the one that's Virginia. taking more defense regarding your, your perversion. Is, it, is this your way of rationalizing your perversion? We all have perversions, if you want to call it that. You know, I think that's a, that's a good question, but Montel, there was something that I don't, I think was partially addressed by the doctor, and a couple of times you've asked the question, why? And uh, people normally don't ask the question, why, if someone likes apples and someone likes oranges. We don't ask why, it's simply something we do. So my question is, why are we, why are we speculating on this? Why? Why is the why answer so important? I don't think it is. Well, but you know, it's not necessarily that, that everybody wants to understand or get the why, but there are people out there in middle America who are wondering, if my daughter came home, I sent her to law school, I sent her out to corporate America, and she comes home dressed like that, you know, if I was like 45, 50 years old and this was my daughter, I'd probably say, wait, no, I'm going to tell you, you want to be a child? Let me take you out back for a second. Why not, why not, why not, why not love her? I mean, after all the money I spent on you, I'm sorry. Wait a second. No, no, so no, wait, wait. I because gotta I, take a break. I, I told mom. Tonight. What's that? I, I told my mom. And what did she say? Come home and put, put you over my knee? No. <laughs> mom goes, okay. If that's what you want to do and you're comfortable with it, then do it, honey. Okay. Well, I will tell you, if you yeah. were in my house, my mom <laughs> would not react the same way. But we'll find out a little bit more when we come back. Talking about people who enjoy dressing up as babies, I mean, preferring to wear like diapers and those kinds of things, and you wanted to make a comment. Yeah, um, this is to Ginger. Um, you seem like a really well together guy, but um, <laughs> I was just. Uh, wait. <laughs> no, that's all right. Well, your point it's was just, that you think that he's, he seems like he's comfortable in what he's doing, is that right? Right, and um, if I'm not looking at you, I think that you're, you're average, normal. But when I look at you, I want to think, you know, you're crazy. But there's something way out there. <laughs> there's so something wrong with there's you. A, but, there's a reason for that, okay? I believe in freedom of expression, and if that's what you guys want to do, I mean, I respect that, and I can accept you. All right, well, Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. She can accept that, Ginger. I and that's, that. that's a good point. But I will tell you this. Now, Jessica, for you, I mean, if, if I knew that I was paying... Seventy-five, eighty, one hundred fifty dollars an hour for you to be my attorney, and at night you were going to go home and put on diapers while my life might be in jeopardy or dangling on a case. I would have to think very quickly about getting my money back from you. I mean, what do you think your clients would say if they found out that you were an attorney? I mean, that you did this. Now, first of all, come on. I, I finish my work before I start doing this, Montel. I know, but come on. I know that lawyers take their work home at times. You get to take... Well, if I take home. my work home, I do it. Hey, Montel, she's learned how to relax. And she's right. ready for you the next day and not uptight. She could go home, hit the bottle, and be bombed. Okay. Yes. This way I, she goes I, I, home. I could well, she's hit the bottle, here. but it might not be the same it's bottle. Right. And it's a safer <laughs> bottle. She goes home, has a good time, relax, and she's ready to go the next day. Yeah. Yeah. Montel, look at it this way. She's not going to be arrested for drunk driving as a result of relaxing this way. There are people who just simply for physiological reasons cannot drink. Right, and so, or so we have things. to have some other way of, and, and look at the shape she's in. She hits the gym from time to time. I, I I'd hit rather the gym. show up at court in the morning relaxed than showing up going, where's my papers? Oh God, I can't find anything. But, but see, the point I'm making is that if I knew you were my lawyer, I would be the one showing up in court going like this. Oh my God, God. <laughs> Huh? The thing about it is, is you don't know. That's I don't the, know. Right. right. And we don't know. know. Want you to and know. we do not know what anybody else is doing that's in positions. Right. If you I, really I don't know what my talk clients about, are doing when they go home. If you want to talk about perverse, yeah. let's talk about what's happening. And I'm not trying to get political. No, no we, don't, we don't want to get too perverse okay, either. Okay, right. right. Well, let's talk in what's happening against people, that is hurting people. What's right. happening with the overspending in Congress, nobody to blame in particular. What's happening in so many other ways 
that are hurting everyday people. But this you know what, no you know, Ginger, I will guarantee you that if we found out that there was a congressman that did this, that would make the headlines. Mm. Sure, And would. the fact that they overspend did and, not. And that's the sure. problem. Right. And that is, that the, is problem. the problem. The problem is that we have made so many things wrong in this country that people go underground with it and the, it develops a, a, a country that is thriving on shame and guilt. And we are a country of hypocrites. That's and, right. And <laughs> we have to realize, remember, exactly what he says, shame and guilt, it's a big industry, it's a big issue. And when people come out and do what these folks are doing here, no, but there's no application forms in the back trying to sign anybody up. To do this okay it's done for enlightenment and that's what a lot of ha things happen people are afraid that people are out here trying to recruit them this is not a recruitment program that i know of right this is no. just an explanation just let me get this question okay, yes, you, ex you said that you have a great feeling doing what you do i mean explain this feeling i mean i want to i want to go into a part of that because i think that's a why question and i wanted to go back to that because well, let's, not, let's not go back to the no i won't of, go back to oh. it but why do i do it and i was brought up I was brought up Catholic, and I was brought up to believe that a lot of my feelings around sexuality were wrong, and there were feelings of shame and guilt that developed around those feelings. And I have come to be able to enjoy those feelings. The shame and guilt are like, they tell me that there's something that's pleasurable there, and that's what I want to go after. It's All right, well, just, ma'am, you can't be heard without a microphone. I'll explain can't be heard what without pleasure a I find in diapers. <laughs> okay. ahead, sir. Diapers are warm. And I shave my body. Okay, you use, now just a minute now, just think a minute. Have you ever had a very nice relaxing massage? A warm massage with oil? A scented oil? Okay, that's the whole issue right here. Diapers are warm, they add a warmth, they add a, add a sauna effect. If you're using baby powder, it's sensuous. If you're using oil, it's sensuous. That's the adult in me. The child in me, the nurturing part, is when I can be a kid and I can hug a teddy bear. Okay, and I can enjoy doing such and not and not worry about someone frowning on me because I love nice things in life and where I can cuddle up and relax. Yes, sir. Yeah, I'm not defending any of you up there, but doesn't all this have something to do with baby talk? Everybody ta talks like babies when they're around their their lover or whatever. Does that have something wait, to do wait, with wait, it? Wait, do you talk like yes. a man? Like everybody but me, I talk like a man all the time. You know, do you talk like a baby around your girlfriend, or are you married? No. Are you, you have a girlfriend? Fiance. Fiance, do you talk like a baby when you're around her? Yes. <laughs> and uh, would you uh, graduate to? Diapers and teddy no, bear? No, never. I was just wondering if it started that way or... <laughs> well, yeah, I, mean, I, mean, I should, can. Does he have something, no, does he have something to be worried about? I mean, I, yeah. No, I think, I, think baby talk is, I think baby talk is important. It's not something I particularly get into. But one of the things that I think we haven't mentioned so far about why this is pleasurable is because as I age regress, I'm able to get back to a time when it's called being polymorphously perverse. In other words, my whole body is very sensuous. I'm connected with all parts of myself. And that's something that we lose as we grow older. Yes, ma'am. Okay, I have a question for Dee. Your husband seems to be in disguise, and I was wondering, you don't seem to be, are you afraid that possibly his colleagues would recognize you and possibly, I don't know, well, pick you know, on your when, husband? When or... I introduced him in the beginning, I said he is in disguise because if they, he's, he works in law enforcement. If other law enforcement people found out about that, I mean, I mean, do you think you'd have, like... Oh, no, I know, but she doesn't seem to be in disguise. Oh. I do so look I'm... totally different. Okay. Yeah, the makeup totally man did okay, a wonderful job. Oh. I am in disguise. But are you embarrassed by what Jean does? Well, I mean, would you go and tell your best friend at work that no, I would not. diapers late at night? No, I probably wouldn't. You would not tell no, them? No, I would not. I'll tell you what we're going to do. Let's take a break. We'll take a break, and when we come back, we'll, uh, we'll see if we can get to some sort of a bottom line. Doctor, you got to help us. So we'll be back in just a second. <laughs> Accommodations for guests on the Montel Williams Show are provided by the Sheraton Los Angeles Airport, the most convenient airport hotel in Los Angeles. We've been talking about adults who like to dress up as children or as infants, and doctor, give us a bottom line on this. Just a quickie, it's not, you know, considered among shrinks. From the shrink standpoint, it's not considered a problem. If somebody has an issue with it themselves, 
then they go for help. But basically, it's not considered a problem. It's a very safe, clean-cut way of fooling around, having fun, getting in touch with your body, getting in touch with your inner child, uh, and making some contacts, and it's a little bit of a control issue because you certainly aren't going to ignore a baby who's crying, whining, and whatever And else. they're not hurting anybody, I right. guess. So, all right, well, I want to thank our guests, Gene, Dee, Ginger, Jessica, Don, Dennis, and Dr. Gordon. Join us again on the next Montel Williams Show. Viacom.